Luke chapter 2, continued. Theme, Birth of Jesus at Bethlehem in a Stable, Reception of Jesus, Angels announce His birth to shepherds, Shepherds visit stable, Circumcision of Jesus and Purification of Mary, Incident in Temple Concerning Simeon, Incident in Temple Concerning Anna, Return to Nazareth, Visit of Joseph, Mary, and Jesus to Jerusalem when Jesus was twelve. Circumcision of Jesus and Purification of Mary. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days of her purification according to the law of Moses were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem, to present him to the Lord, Luke 2 21-22. For forty days a woman was considered unclean after the birth of a child, according to the Mosaic law. Mary as a sinner had to bring a sacrifice to the Lord. She needed a Savior as she said. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to that which is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves, or two young pigeons, Luke 2 23-24. Mary and Joseph offered turtle doves as a sacrifice, which were an evidence of their poverty. The sacrifice was for Mary and not for the child. As far as we know, Jesus never offered a sacrifice. Incident in Temple Concerning Simeon And, behold, there was a man in Jerusalem, whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost, that he should not see death, before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus, to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms, and blessed God, and said, Luke 2 25-28. There was a man by the name of Simeon who by the Holy Spirit was in the temple when the Lord Jesus was brought in to fulfill the Mosaic law. God had promised Simeon that he would see the salvation of God. What did he see? He saw a little baby. Salvation is a person, and not something that you do. Salvation is a person, and that person is the Lord Jesus Christ. You either have Him, or you don't have Him. You either trust Him, or you don't trust Him. Do you have Him today? Now here is another solo, and Simeon is singing it for us. Lord, now lettest Thou Thy servant depart in peace, according to Thy word, for mine eyes have seen Thy salvation which Thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles, and the glory of Thy people Israel, Luke 2 29-32. This is a remarkable statement coming from a man who was limited in his outlook upon life, that is, he was limited to a particular area geographically. Yet he saw the one who was to be the Savior of the world. This is to me one of the amazing things about the Word of God, especially the New Testament. Although given to a certain people, it is certainly directed to the world. No other religion pointed that way. You will notice that the religions of the world are generally localized for a peculiar people, generally a race or nation. But Christianity has been from the outset for all people everywhere. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them, and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, This child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Luke 2 33-35. Notice that Luke calls them Joseph and his mother, not his father and mother. Mary paid a tremendous price to bring the Savior into the world. She paid an awful price to stand beneath the cross of the Lord Jesus and watch Him die. The cross of Christ has moved many people, artists have painted the picture, songwriters have written music about it, and authors and preachers have sketched those moments with words. There is a danger of dwelling on his death in a sympathetic way. Christ did not die to elicit anyone's sympathy. He does not want your sympathy, he wants your faith. Later in the Gospel of Luke, when the Lord is on the way to the cross, some women began to weep. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves, and for your children, Luke 23 28. If you have tears for Jesus, save them for yourself and your family. 
Do not weep for him, because he does not want your sympathy. Jesus Christ wants your faith. However, when Mary stood beneath that cross and watched Jesus die, it was with a broken heart. Of course her suffering had nothing to do with your salvation, her suffering had nothing to do with her salvation. Her suffering was due to a human relationship. She was his human mother. She had brought him into the world and raised him. He was her son. You see, when our Lord looked down from the cross and said, Woman, behold thy son. John 19:26. a human relationship was there that no one else had. She was suffering as his mother. And at that time the prophecy of Simeon was fulfilled, the sword pierced through her soul also. Incident in Temple Concerning Anna There are many solos in this gospel and now here is another one. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Osir, she was of a great age, and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity, and she was a widow of about fourscore and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And she coming in that instant gave, thanks likewise unto the Lord, and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem, Luke 2 36-38. Anna, like Simeon, was living very close to God, and he granted to her also the gracious insight of recognizing his son, her Messiah. She gave, thanks. Although her song is not recorded, it is a song of praise. I cannot refrain from saying that there are those who say there are ten lost tribes of Israel, that is, that the ten tribes which went into Assyrian captivity in the 8th century BC, migrated north rather than returning to the land of Israel. If you search through the Bible from the time Israel returned to the land after the captivity, you can pick up practically all of the tribes. Here Anna is mentioned as a member of the tribe of Asher. Evidently Anna did not get lost. The account of Matthew tells us that the next event in the life of Jesus was a trip to Egypt. Luke omits this account entirely. It is well to remember again the purpose for writing each gospel is different. Matthew presents the Lord Jesus Christ as King and Luke presents him as the perfect man. The coming of the wise men does not fit into Luke's purpose for writing. The wise men came looking for a king, not for the ideal of the Greek race. Luke presents him as the perfect man, and notice how he carries out his purpose even at this point. Return to Nazareth. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee, to their own city Nazareth. And the child grew, and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Luke 2 39-40. Luke is presenting the perfect man. Dr. Luke looks at the boy not only through the eyes of an obstetrician but through the watchful eye of a pediatrician. The Lord Jesus grew, physically, waxed strong in spirit, spiritually, and was filled with wisdom, mentally. The grace of God was upon this boy and he grew physically, spiritually, and mentally. Visit of Joseph, Mary, and Jesus to Jerusalem when Jesus was twelve. Next is recorded an incident that only Dr. Luke relates. Luke does this because he is a pediatrician and is interested in the Lord as a boy as well as a man. Luke lifts one scene out of the boyhood of Jesus when he was twelve years old. Since nothing is recorded in the Gospels about the early life of Jesus, some people call this segment of his life the silent years. I do not consider them silent years, I believe that the Old Testament scriptures fill in these years if you look closely. Luke's account is a detailed, isolated incident that took place when Jesus was twelve years old. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was twelve years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him, Luke 2 41-45. Mary and Joseph were raising a normal, healthy child. He did not run around wearing a halo, friend. The artists of the Middle Ages had some strange conceptions about the Lord Jesus, both as a child and as an adult. I do not believe he looked like any of their ideas. He was just a normal boy. 
In those days people traveled in companies. When the time came to leave Jerusalem, the folk going to Galilee gathered together at a little town right north of Jerusalem to begin the journey home. That is where they missed him. Joseph probably said, Where is Jesus? And Mary replied, I thought he was with you. They looked for him among all the people they knew, and when they discovered that he was missing, they returned to Jerusalem. They looked for Jesus for three days, and where do you suppose they found him? He was in the temple. And it came to pass, that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them, and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed, and his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them, Luke 2 46-50. When Mary and Joseph finally found Jesus in the temple, he was standing in the midst of the learned doctors of that day, both hearing them and asking them questions. Apparently he was asking them questions they could not answer. And they were astonished at his answers, remember, he was only twelve. I think it is clear that Mary and Joseph were a little provoked with him. The answer of Jesus revealed his surprise that they did not realize he should be about his father's business. Now, if Joseph were the father, he could have stepped up and said, Well, what are you trying to do, get some carpenter work here in Jerusalem? No, his father was not Joseph. He was speaking of the business of his heavenly father. Mary, at this point, did not exactly appreciate who he was and what his work entailed, but she pondered these things in her heart. And he went down with them, and came to Nazareth, and was subject unto them, but his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature, and in favor with God and man, Luke 2 51-52. Jesus was subject unto his parents. This is interesting in the light of the fact that young people today are rebelling and are demanding to be heard. They say we ought to listen to them. I have listened to them, and I have not heard them say anything yet, regardless of all the publicity they are given on the television and radio. I personally do not think a college student has much to say. He is still green behind his ears, regardless of his IQ. The information he has been given is limited and biased, and he does not have the experience to evaluate it. It is remarkable to see that this boy, Jesus, the Son of God, obeyed his parents and was subject unto them. Dr. Luke gives us a report about those silent years when Jesus was growing to adulthood. He grew in wisdom, mentally, in stature, physically, in favor with God, spiritually, and man, socially. In every area the Lord Jesus Christ was growing into perfect manhood.